Jaya Ha. <laughs> this is my my place, Vital Gate, and it's uh, it's a temple space. It's sacred. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I've been kind of designing this uh, Vital Tantra system, which is an actualization of you know the ancient tantra into uh, today's world, and um, I'm going to share a little bit what this is about. So. Um, <clears throat> yeah, when you hear the word Tantra, you know, very often you associate that a lot with sexual practices, you know, this is the Neo-Tantra, it's what has been uh, westernized and um, uh, sent into today's world. But what I want to tell you is that, imagine that maybe 10, 20,000 years ago, or maybe more recently, there was this spirit, this force that arrived on planet Earth and it's a very powerful intelligence and that force started incarnating itself in the Himalayas and uh, in India and then it started touching the minds of different people you know different human beings that become became teachers or gurus or masters within that system and then a whole tradition was created that became what we call the traditional Tantra right and then that spirit is alive it keeps on evolving and it's a vast sphere of potential energy when I was in the Himalayas and I went to the source of the Ganges, I went to meditate in some caves really high in the glaciers. This is like 5,000 meters high over there. And uh, I stayed in this cave and the cave was like a broadcasting station where you could really gain this tremendous amount of clarity. The reason why it's a broadcasting station is because uh, teachers and sadhus and people have been meditating in those spaces for an extended period of time or maybe hundreds of years. And so when you arrive over there, because the space has been already um, activated in that way, what tends to happen is that you arrive there and the, uh, the circulation of energy that brings you to a profound meditative state is already active, it's already alive. And so within the context of that, that cave, within this sacredness, with incense and candles burning all around me, and then, you know, this vast peak, 7,000 meters peak, the Nidakant, the Narayana Parbat, all right around me, and uh, the beautiful starry night, and suddenly I realized that Tantra is an infinite sphere of energy, it's an infinite spirit, it's like a force that is alive and uh, that started transmitting itself in and around me. And what I realized as well was that I could become an agent of transmission for that force. You know, this is my mission. This is part of my mission. It's not the only mission, but one of them is to be a channel for that energy, to be a channel for that power. And so when I'm designing this thing that I call Vital Tantra, you know, when I'm designing this, what I'm doing is like I'm taking this spirit of this force and instead of trying to duplicate an ancient tradition, what I'm doing is like I'm tuning into what this spirit wants in today's world. And everything needs to be actualized to today. It needs to be actualized to technology, to the Western world, to the Western mind, to ways of thinking, to new languages even. We don't have to go back to something that is ancient in the past. We can take that energy, that ancient energy, and transfer it into the, today's world and renew it and recreate something that is adapted to the needs of today's world. For example? Well, for example... The energy know, of who? Shiva? Um, yeah, the energy of Shiva is something that is eternal and of course, you know, it can be transferred to today's world. But for instance, when uh, you have struggles, you know, in, in uh, for instance, 500 years ago, when people were looking at, um, at the Tantra system and designing, you know, uh, the, the, the system itself, what they were looking at is the challenge that people were facing at that time. They were looking at the ways to enhance or optimize people's lives within the context of what, what India was maybe five or a thousand years ago. And so um, what we are doing today is like we look at today's challenges and then we, we bring in solutions and ways of worshipping or ways of being or ways of connecting with the divine and going back to source or optimizing our lives using the Tantra system as a secret environment or sacred, secret source of, op, of, uh, of energy to optimize our lives and to reconnect to the source, to reconnect with the sense of unity and connection with uh, the universe around us. So it is a pathway. It's like you're climbing a mountain through uh, the west or through the east. You know, what happened in the past is that um, 
Tantra was a certain system and it's, it's a certain pathway to go to the top. And today another pathway or other pathways are being designed which are inspired by what happened in the past. It doesn't mean that we discard completely that, but we actualize it so that uh, there is a language or a way of communicating and um, a set of techniques and practices that are actualized for today's world, you know, for instance, in terms of nutrition, what we eat or how we approach our relationship to our bodies, our relationship to our sex lives, to our thoughts, to our patterns, you know, all that has been evolving. And so you don't necessarily need to learn Sanskrit <laughs> to be able to do that. You don't necessarily need to know everything about the ancient scriptures. It can help, of course. It can be a source of inspiration. But you can put all that within this world and, and, and think, okay, what is it that you need today, you know, to establish that connection and to be able to channel into your life the spirit of Tantra? So this is what I'm designing today. You know, I've been in the process of of creating that for like the last five, six years and lots of things are emerging. I talk about vital truth, satyayama, uh, sexual mastery, uh, kamayama, and then there is uh, the, you know, the, the vital fights and the ability to dive into the vital shadows, what we call the vital shadows, to be able to master that environment as well. Master the prayer, master all these different things, master the body, uh, tanuyama, ashanayama, mastery of the food as well. And so there is a whole new set of concepts and ideas that are emerging that are the result of actualizing this ancient spirit, this ancient, you know, spirit that has been there and is reincarnating itself in different parts of the world using different teachers and different people to become channels for, uh, for the manifestation and the evolution of the planet and humankind. So this is to put it within perspective. If you think of Tantra, you don't have to define it within words. It's an experience, it's an experience of something that is unlimited, that is free-flowing, and every now and then takes a certain form, a certain tradition, incarnates it, and then evolves and then incarnates itself in a different way, you know? But uh, a new master, a new teacher, a new guru might come and redefine the way we practice it and create a whole new set of practice around something. And this is how traditions, uh, religions, spiritual system, and human systems evolve. We need to be flexible. We need to go with the flow and reactualize things to do this world. I love you. Thank you.